We want your uh, bike stories today. When was the last time that you were on a bike? Did you encounter a swarm of moths so horrible that you couldn't believe? Let us know. Was it, you know, was it this weekend? Did you go on a bike for your commute? Or was it back in the 1950s? Get in touch. You can call us 0500 92 95 00. Email fred at bbc.co.uk, text 80295 or tweet at Macaulay and Co. Thank you very much, Anna, and welcome back. So how would you charm your in-laws, folks? Would you take them out for dinner, shower them with compliments? Not if you're George Clooney. He's whisked his off to his private villa in Lake Como in Italy. But we can't all do that because, A, we're not all George Clooney, and, B, we don't all have private villas on Lake Como in Italy. So how do normal people get on with the in-laws? Here with us this morning is Agony Uncle and author of 52 Teen Boy and 52 Teen Girl Problems and how to solve them, Alex Hooper Hodgson. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Fred. How's, how are you? how's Brighton this morning, Alex? Brighton is sunny and beautiful oh, yes. and I cycle to the studio, I'll have you know. Well so. done, you. Ah. Yeah, what, indeed. What kind of bike have you got? I have a mountain bike <laughs> and okay. I, I cycle everywhere. I cycle, what, two hours a day every single day, so I'm a big cyclist. Fit yeah. as a flea. Have yeah, you, re- really fit as a flea, definitely. Alex, yeah. have you ever seen a moth swarm I I, do you know what I've, I, you've actually given me the shivers talking about the moth swarm I don't, I've never Sorry. heard of anything Anna no nothing like that one but. of our <laughs> uh, co-presenters here or a colleague rather Shireen Nanjani has a fear of moths or did have a fear mm-hmm. of moths we try to cure of that, of that phobia but that was a single moth mm. cool. I pray to God that Shireen's <laughs> not listening to this don't go to Montreal Shireen we've mm. got a man in here with some in-law experience John McKendrick good to see you again John how are you morning Fred I'm very well all good with the, with the in-laws yes spent the weekend with them in the garden uh-huh. all good take us back to when you first met them did you make a good impression in the first meeting well not too bad not too bad I was in a pub that right. always helps I think mm-hmm. uh, to kind of loosen up and feel good about things yeah uh-huh. my, my mother-in-law had something interesting though. she said that she liked me because I held her eye which I thought was quite interesting. <laughs> maybe that's important. Yeah, so uh, maybe she'd, uh, my daughter, she wasn't uh, using it at the time. <laughs> maybe she just going. She had uh, obviously the the wife had some dodgy boyfriends in the past, uh-huh. and um, I must have. Um, it just kind of looked over her shoulder when Indeed. she was speaking to them. Indeed. But is that a talent that you think that you have to 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 hold somebody's, somebody's eyes? Gaze? Uh, it scares me a wee bit. I made me sound like a bit of a freak, uh-huh. to be honest. The fact I was looking at somebody's I eyes. I what was going through, through your them. mind just or through her mind? Uh-huh. Indeed. Let this man's eyes nice wander away from Boring him. into <laughs> <laughs> She's lovely, I have to but say. That's I don't great. Have well, that's the first impressions. They obviously count, don't they, Alex? Absolutely. The first impressions always count. I mean, I, I was thinking, particularly in the, the situation with George Clooney, um, because he's such a famous star and because he's more of a generation with the mother in law. I mean, you're talking about hol- hol- holding someone's eyes there. Mm-hmm. But you have to wonder, you know, has the mother in law ever sort of looked at George Clooney in, in that kind of way before? You know, a lot of, I guess, a lot of women that age may have done. And, um, Perhaps she she may be a bit jealous in some ways as well of her of her younger daughter in law, a younger daughter rather. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? If, yeah. you, if there was a potential flirting situation with a mother in law. Well, you know, with someone like George Clooney, he's sort of an international playboy. That's uh, uh-huh. that's certainly possible, isn't it? Is it? Would you say he's a playboy? I think he used to be, not so much these days, no, but he used set, to. Certainly settling a, down. He's settling down now, but you know, he's certainly had his 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 years of uh, of having fun. You know, in the last sort of twenty years. Uh huh. Well, he, he has. Um, so you, you meet them first off, uh, hold hold their eye. That's the main thing to do. Don't, don't hold their hand or anything else first off. Uh, but if you've not got a villa on Lake Como to go to, Alex, what, what should you be offering them instead? Okay, so I think that yeah, it, rather than wondering what, what you should be offering them, I think you should look at some of the issues that can arise when you when you meet the sort of the in laws, as it were. So I think, firstly, it's it's important to say that there'll always be trouble when people marry or pair off because mm-hmm. the union they have represents the collision of two different family systems. And obviously, in the case of George Clooney, he has, as I said, he's come from kind of a previous Playboy lifestyle, being uh, someone who I, I believe he dropped out of university. Um, he, he dropped out of two universities after failing to become a pro basketball player. Oh, so for goodness. Sick. I know. So when he did succeed in Hollywood, I guess you know it, it Just was as well. it was on his charms and he, obviously his acting ability as uh-huh. well. He, he's obviously a very charismatic individual, but he's marrying into a family where you've got a very serious journalist mother and they are Druze by religion and some of them are Sunni Muslims. So there's definitely a, a very different kind of dynamic between the two families here. So one of the things he really needs to be aware of is that you know this union 
it does represent this meshing of different philosophies and lifestyles right down to anything from sort of sex you know to cooking to sort of the religion itself so mm -hmm. there could definitely be some interesting kind of uh, uh, hurdles to jump in, in in that sort of situation i think that you're know, playing your trump card of the villa in late como is mm -hmm. pretty it's pretty much essential for george Failed at university, didn't get into the basketball team. Yep. He's a bit of a playboy. What's he going to, you know, come, come and stay in my nice house and remember, I'm not Warren Beatty. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's going to have to say. John, let's go back to uh, sure. meeting the in-laws and after the first impression, moving on and keeping on the right side. And I've got to say, I don't think I've ever had a, a cross word with my, my mother-in-law. Father-in-law, sadly, not with us any longer, but great people there right? yeah likewise as well I think two things help I think having children help uh, that's, your, that's your passport to success and, and also think having no interest in DIY is important for the, the father-in-law uh -huh. <laughs> so that he can teach you absolutely take over he takes over he tells me what to do and I don't mind one jot mm -hmm. I practice it been inept in these matters and, and he excels in telling me what to do <laughs> hence we had a very happy weekend in the garden and I, how, how important is it then to have kind of uh, in shared common interests then? Well, we've got an odd interest. The father-in-law, for example, I'm a football referee and he is an ardent supporter of a certain team and that <laughs> doesn't work. Um, no, no, it doesn't oh, okay. work at all. Uh -huh. he, he, we'd won very awkward card journey back from a match where he didn't speak to me at all for, for uh, 90 minutes driving home. <laughs> And Tough. who was in the right? Obviously the referee was in the right. <laughs> so you were supporting the referee? Well, I was the referee. Oh, that you was were the, the referee? That was I the problem. See. I had um, I'd, I'd sinned against his team in the uh, last few minutes and oh had to endure a tough journey home. Goodness, it's a nightmare, John. Um, what was your first impression of them then? Well, they were nice. They were uh, again, very pleasant people. The father-in-law wasn't too bothered about me, to be honest. He was talking to all these pals, and I thought, that's okay, I don't mm -hmm. mind that. Uh, and the mother-in-law was, was very pleasant and intently keen. I, I was actually hidden from them for a long time. I don't know whether my wife was embarrassed about me or not, or I was just playing it cagey. It took uh -huh. about three months before I was... Uh, I used to hide outside the house in a car. <laughs> I, I'm in my mid-30s at the time. Uh -huh. Not hiding yet. Outside. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was relief, I think, more uh -huh. than anything. What, Alex, would be the, the difference between meeting the mother-in-law and the father-in-law if you don't meet them both at the same time? Okay, so I was going to say, I mean, particularly because he's a new son-in-law coming mm -hmm. into the relationship, it's probably easier for a mother-in-law to relate to a new son-in-law than perhaps, let's say, a new daughter-in-law, um, because a new daughter-in-law may overlap too much into her own sphere of influence and territory. So it, I think in this case, he's actually probably in a better position. Uh, you know, uh, the daughter-in-law can't flirt her way out of trouble in the way a son-in-law might. So, you know, he, he has his charms at his disposal, and he is George Clooney, after all. Let's not forget this, you know, in this situation. <laughs> Um, but also I think it's really important you know, for him just to communicate sort of talking about this kind of thing he needs to be able to um, be aware that the, the mother-in-law is a very powerful and influential family figure in this family unit and he needs to form an alliance with her uh, just to make sure that you know, he, he wants to have a deep relationship with the daughter, with his future bride and you know, building a good relationship with the mother certainly is the way to go with that absolutely it's interesting what uh, John said there about uh, meeting uh, the in-laws and you know, the, the passport to success is, is having family. But is it up to the... Can the in-laws at any point, Alex, say what are your intentions in that respect? Or is that something that has to be fed through your partner? Because, you know, I wonder if George's in-laws are sort of suggesting, well, if you're having kids, you know, George, you're, you're, you're going to be a fair old age. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. I, th I think it really depends on the situation because I think sometimes you have you have in-laws who are very reasonable and, and rational and you have really good relationships with them as, as, you know, a member of the family marrying into it. I think sometimes you, you happen to, uh, you might, you know, meet someone who's got quite crotchety sort of uh, parents or, or kind of unreasonable and I think really you play it by ear in that situation. Certainly you have to mediate certain conversations through mm -hmm. your partner um, and that would be because, you know, it, ultimately as much as you get on with the family, don't be sort of under any illusions. If, you know, if things really came to the crunch, they're always going to fall down on on the side of your your partner because they are her family. As much as they're a pseudo family for you, ultimately they they're really her family. They're, they're her last line of defence, really, aren't they? So when if you know if things do fall apart at some stage in the relationship, they're, they're going to be on her side, not yours, in that situation. So certainly there are conversations that can be mediated through through the uh, the other partner. Um, but also, I think in the case of Clooney as well, you know, he needs to 
get in with the new family. He needs to build this alliance, but he also needs to try not to overdo it too much, mm-hmm. um, because there's always the danger, what with the kind of the age gap and, and with him ending up coming very close to the parents, that the wife could end up seeing him sort of as a, as a third parent, um, or even a kind of interfering older kind of father figure, <laughs> which is, if you think, you know, Michael Douglas, Catherine Zeta-Jones, this mm-hmm. is something we've seen before in Hollywood, you know, where, uh, you know, Michael Douglas did kind of end up being a kind of a, a granddaddy fathery figure to, to Miss Jones, <laughs> rather than, I guess, the, the husband that I guess he wanted. I think that was how the public perception was of that. That is an interesting yeah. point that you make about the relationship. You know, if the, if something does go slightly awry and you're not able to sort it out yourself, that the spouse will go back to their parents mm-hmm. and discuss mm-hmm. it with their parents. Um, because A, the, the, the other spouse is going to be thinking, oh, hang on, if we're not able to sort this out ourselves, what sort of advice are they getting from the... Oh, yeah. Because they're always going to surely err on the side of their daughter or son, aren't and, they? And that's kind of what I was saying about, you know, some people have crotchety, difficult in-laws, some people have really rational and reasonable in-laws, and I think that's the key thing, you know. You never know what information is being said mm-hmm. to your, your partner, and you just have to hope that, you know, they're nice people and, and they're saying the right thing and they're actually being supportive of the relationship, at least trying to make it work. Um, and if they're not sort of, you know, very reasonable, rational people, or if they have a prejudice or dislike against you or they've had a bad first impression or whatever then I think it's just important that you trust your partner to be able to mediate in her own mind between you know what's good advice and what's kind of maybe the parents being a bit sort of difficult and, and crotchety and, and a bit prejudiced so I hopefully you know if you're in a relationship with someone you trust them and you have faith in them and that would be uh, enough but obviously in some situations I guess it doesn't always work out the yeah. way you want it to that's a, a nice way to finish this but we're not done talking yet because I want to ask John um, given that he's a football referee and we've got the World Cup on just now, um, what would you have done with uh, Robin for that uh, spectacular uh, swallow dive in the box? I would have clapped him. Uh-huh. I could have to. It was fantastic. It was, oh, sorry, I'm, th- I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going back. Actually, I, I missed that game. I thought you were talking about the header by Van Persie. Oh no, 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 oh, just, Robin Van Persie. Just... No, I was talking about the the. Round of 16 ah, match. Sorry, I was Holland. painting the side of the house at the time oh, last night, yes, <laughs> with the father in law, no doubt, indeed. So I missed no, that one. He, he got his foot slightly trod on, but uh, he went down. Ah, right. um, and I, I assume, I, you know, I didn't see the incident, but I saw him going down the first time I saw him going down, and I thought, gosh, he's been poleaxed. But it wasn't quite so serious. Oh. But that was a very diplomatic referee style answer <laughs> to have given me, John. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Alex.